Hi, I'm Scott Valentine, and I'd like to show you an unusual way to use the brand new RepuSay feature in Photoshop CS5 Extended. We'll create this little maypole effect here. So let's dive right in. I have a pattern that is on a transparent layer all by itself. I'll select this pattern and choose RepuSe from the 3D menu, current selection. Give it a second to work its magic and create a 3D extrusion. You can see it's given us these cylinders right away, so that's our foundation. The first thing that we need to do is increase the depth just a little bit. And here's one of the real tricks, dropping the scale down to zero, which brings all the ends to a point. You can see now we have a cone shape. The next thing is to add in a little bit of a twist. Let's give it 66 degrees. And let's give it something to stand on and increase the inflation of the front material to about 45, 46 degrees. Finally, select best from the mesh quality to give you nice smooth curves. Click OK and let it apply everything. Now let's orient our maypole a little bit so we can see a little bit better. That's it. Okay, now we have to apply some materials. Opening up the 3D panel, we can go to Filter by Materials, select the Extrusion Material, and let's start with opening up the Diffuse Texture. We'll grab the Gradient tool and select a Rainbow Gradient. Just drag that right up at an angle. Save and close that, and you can see it's applied immediately. Now we have to add the Opacity material, so back into our panel, select Extrusion again, and this time we'll have to create the opacity texture. Check to make sure that the document parameters are the way you want them. Select OK, and that will give us a new option down here on the 3D layer. Double click to open it, create a new layer, back up to our gradient presets and choose the bars, drag out a couple of bars, and then copy them to fill up the entire layer. There we go, we don't have to be precise. That looks like it's pretty good right there. We'll merge all these layers down into one. Zoom out so we can see everything, and then rotate it. Stretch a little bit more to fill everything. There we go. Apply the transform and we'll go ahead and give it a blur to soften up the transitions of the ribbons. There we go, that looks pretty good. Save it and close that and you can see we now have our, our maypole right in place. Let's give it a nicer background and perhaps rotate it a little bit. And for a finishing touch we can use a wider angled lens, give it a little blur, and we'll dolly the camera forward to position the maypole right in the middle of our gradient. All right, all that's left from here is to render it and uh, add your own finishing touches. So I'm Scott Valentine, and I hope you've enjoyed this demonstration.